Hello, everybody. Can you hear me and still see my screen? I see someone nodding, so that's yes. All right, my name is Joop. This is the product update. I'm briefly going over what we just shipped in 9.5, what we're shipping in 10, and what we're going to do beyond. Um, but there will be plenty of time to ask questions. And ask away, please. So GitLab 9.5. To me, it seemed like forever ago that we shipped 9.5, because we've been working on 10 for a while, but it was actually just a week ago that we shipped GitLab 9.5. And what happens is that it's vacation, and people go away on vacation with very little capacity. So what happened, actually, is that we shipped another amazing release. Um, the biggest deal, the biggest thing we shipped this release was uh, GPG commit verification, which started out, actually, as a contribution by someone from the community. So I, I'm extremely proud of the fact that such a major feature, such a highly requested feature, comes from someone in the community. So they started the contribution. Of course, we helped them. Um, but this is a really nice feature, which basically allows you to make sure that you are the author of a particular commit and no one else. Uh, very important. Many people wanted to have this. So this is a really big step in, in GitLab's history. We also included a whole bunch of new navigation improvements. So you know that we have a new navigation. It's still opt-in. And please mute yourself, even if you're on mobile, because I'm hearing someone. Um, and in this release, we shipped a few improvements, specifically allowing you to quickly navigate to subparts of a project. Casey, I'm publicly shaming you. You're not muted. We also shipped project templates. So GitLab, of course, allows you to not only have your code there, but it also allows you to quickly uh, set up CI. And with project templates, we made it much easier if you're using Rails or Node or Spring. You can now just click on the project template, and you have a good starting point for a new project. This is a really powerful idea, because what we want is that getting started with the project, you know, building something, it shouldn't require you to do all this extra work, such as, oh, I have to type in the commands to bootstrap my project, then push to GitLab, and then I can get started. If we take away all those steps, it saves you maybe a few minutes. But those few minutes, well, you can use them for something else. This is a really good step, and it helps people getting started with things like CI much faster. So we can build on this for forever. And every time we add a new feature, we can add it to these templates. Uh, it's really nice that we have this right now. Quite a big deal. We also allow you to automatically retry your failed CI jo jobs, um, which because sometimes they're not completely deterministic, as it seems. Um, and even cooler, if you are auto-deploying the app. So we have auto-deploy, which allows you to do nothing and have your project basically deployed to your Kubernetes cluster. And with automatic monitoring, we're actually monitoring your app if you've used auto deploy to deploy it. So that means you don't have to set up monitoring and then report them somewhere, share credentials. No, you just go into GitLab, press monitoring. And there you have the most important statistics. Very cool. And we also shipped the beta of Postgres HA, where you have automatic failover, so that if one of your databases falls over, GitLab will start using the other one. Come back to this, it's a big deal for the future. Now, as I said, we've been working on GitLab 10 for a while already. And well, the number itself says it up. It's a very, very big release. I have only a few highlights here, and I ran out of space on my slide. Um, but it's a very big deal. Actually, we're right at the end of finishing work on GitLab 10. We should be finishing next week with the first step in development. And then we'll go test it to then release it on September 22nd. Some of the things that we're shipping. For one, group level issue boards. This is one of the highest requested features ever in GitLab. GBG commit verification was another one, so we shipped that. Um, group level issue boards allowing you to manage your issues across a group. I know that a lot of people are waiting for this. We we're planning to do it for 9.5, but it's a complex feature, so. But it's really landing in GitLab 10, and I'm super excited about it. It seems simple, but a lot of people want it, and it finally allows you to manage issues across projects rather than in one project in itself. We're also working on GitLab Server HA, basically making it easy to set up an HA instance of GitLab. So right now, you can have HA parts. So you can have Reddits easily in HA. And now we share Postgres. But we want that the server component also is easily set up as HA. So to make it easy, we're working on a few different things. We're thinking about leveraging console for this. Um, Hopefully, this will make it 10. 
What we're also doing is many of our customers and of our users, they're still using Jira. And of course, we prefer them to use GitLab issues. But until they finally see the light and switch, we want them to be able to use Jira successfully together with GitLab. And to do that, we're going to support the, GitLab, the Jira development panel, basically allowing you to quickly see inside of Jira what is happening with your commits in GitLab. Um, so it's actually quite of a big deal, this Jira integration. We even have it on our website a specific page just for Jira. If you go to about.gitlab.com slash feature slash Jira, you can see what we do right now and what we're planning to do in the future. And this is one of the most important steps in it. If we have this, we are all, you know, on par with the competition. And after this, we are going to do more. We're also finishing the first iteration of Auto DevOps. So you are familiar with Auto Deploy. And Auto DevOps goes one step further. So it gives you all the tools. And of course, the auto monitoring is part of that. It basically allows you, I have a project. And everything for me is set up. I don't have to think about it anymore. I don't have to think about setting up a CI YAML, for instance. Everything just happens under the hood at GitLab, and your project is ready to go, deployed with monitoring and everything out of the box. It's a very powerful idea. It's also one of those things that will be extending forever, and shipping that first iteration is a very, very big deal. We're also allowing you to lock an issue. Now, you might wonder, well, why, why is this a big deal? Well, as GitLab is growing, GitLab.com in particular, but other instances as well, are becoming more social platforms. And unfortunately, in social platforms, sometimes you, have, you need tools to moderate what is happening. You need tools to stop a discussion. And the ability to lock an issue basically allows you to say, only if you're a project member, you can continue commenting on a particular issue. So this allowing from a particular issue or a particular project or group, people from the outside to comment, even though they might have access. This is an important feature, and we want to make sure that everyone that uses GitLab is confident and feels safe about using GitLab. And these kind of tools help us manage and build communities on top of GitLab and GitLab.com, in particular, it being a very big instance. And lastly, and I think this is the biggest change for everyone that is using GitLab today and is running one of the versions and then upgrades to 10, is that the new navigation will no longer be opt-in, no, everyone will just get it. So if you install GitLab 10, you'll be welcomed with a new application. This is one of the first features where we said, you know, we're not going to release immediately, but we're going to make it opt-in and then iterate over the releases until we're in a place where we're happy and confident that this is an actual improvement. And I think for those of you that have been using a new navigation, I think most people agree that this is a big, big improvement. One of the smallest things in it, which I think is already such a, such a big improvement, is the ability to directly navigate to sub-navigation, sub-pages. So for instance, if you want to go to issue boards, in the old navigation, you had to click on issues, page would load, then you had to click on boards. And with the new navigation, you can just hover over issues and then click on boards. So the page only has to load once, you go directly where you need to go. And it's really important because for one, it's less clicks. Two, you don't have to load two pages, so it's much faster. And three, we want people to actually visit all these pages. And if, we if you have to click twice, and if you have to load two pages, we're raising a threshold for you to actually click on that. And in our research testing, we found that only one in six people could find issue boards, would ever even encounter it. And we hope that these kind of changes will make it more likely that people visit these pages. There's much more to do in terms of making sure people visit these kind of features and that you know, we teach people how to use it, the whole onboarding experience. But this goes a long way in doing these kind of things. And as I said, GitLab 10 is a huge release. It will be very, very, very full of features. A number of features came from 9.5. We brought them to 10. Many of them are in 10. Um, so it's a very exciting release. And this is just a small, small highlight of, of what we're going to do. All right. Up next, beyond. By the way, if you like my rocket gifts, they were all totally indicative of what is happening. So here we're still shipping the parts. And we're still thinking about what to do exactly. Another interesting story, this is the uh, space shuttle on top of a plane. When NASA was building the space shuttle on one side of the country, and then they had to fly, or they had to bring the space shuttle to Florida, they didn't have a good plan. And it was actually an engineer that had like a miniature plane 
that they were playing with. And he said, well, why don't we just stick the space shuttle on, on top of the plane? So they took a model of the space shuttle and they put it on the model plane and they flew it around and it worked perfectly. And then they said, well, let's buy some planes. So that's how that story went. All right. By the way, the space shuttle is no longer flying anymore. It's a big loss to the world, but that's another story. So what are we doing next? Um, well, a whole lot of things. And I'm gonna give you the very general executive overview of some of the things that we are thinking about, uh, because it's all big topics that will take many, many releases. And I think it's interesting to know what we are thinking about. So first, we are thinking about extending our range of products. So you have today GitLab Community Edition, Enterprise Edition Starter, Enterprise Edition Premium, and then what we want to introduce is Enterprise Edition Ultimate, a tier of features of the product that is interesting for very large enterprises, think 5,000 users or more. These kind of enterprises have very unique challenges. They're, you have to think about the kind of stuff we need to manage uh, GitLab.com, which has more than a million users. These are the kind of features that only are applicable to these extremely large enterprises. Of course, they also have very unique authentication, authorization needs, um, and even just managing hundreds of projects. It's a very complex thing. And to be able to give enterprises an insight about how things are going, those are the kind of challenges that we want to solve with Enterprise Edition Ultimate. Um, and within that, one of the things that we can, we think we have some space to win is to go in the direction of portfolio management, which I think is a terrible name for what it actually does, but it's basically giving you the ability to manage teams and projects from a higher level, basically allowing you to say, well, I have this much capacity in terms of people and hours, and I have all these projects. How do I distribute all that capacity over the projects so that I get a good return on value, right? And it's, it's all very business speak, but it comes down in GitLab in practice that we're thinking about things like giving you the ability to have epics. So nowadays we sometimes make meta issues. Well, let's make that a first class citizen and call it epics, maybe something across projects. And then once you have that, you can start thinking about things like Gantt charts, which is those charts where you have the horizontal blocks that represent an abstraction of multiple issues. And then having the ability to plan those over time and seeing, oh, if I add more people here, then maybe I can do these things. Or if I take this person from this project and put it in that one, I see that the timelines of these projects change. And that is basically what portfolio management gives you. It's a huge subject. There's enormous companies that do nothing but ship this kind of, this kind of software. So for us to say, we're gonna ship portfolio management in GitLab, is like saying, you know, we're gonna build a car. We already have the bolts for the wheels. It's, it's, it's gonna be a long path and there's gonna be a lot of features that fit within this. But I think it's an interesting direction and it will help us level up the issue tracker because all of these features that portfolio management needs, we're gonna build iteratively over many releases. So slowly but surely, the issue tracker will get better and it will be driven by this need of going towards this point for like, how can we achieve a good portfolio management product? As always, and I say this almost every update and I'm gonna, going to keep saying it because these are the things that are really important we're still working on HA, we're still working on GL, and we're still working on disaster recovery. Uh, when you have all your codes and all your issues and all your CI and everything that outputs and GitLab manages your server, you know, it's incredibly important that GitLab is stable. So any person that we put onto this is never a loss and we're gonna keep on expanding the products and the amount of time that we sp spend on things like HA, GL, and disaster recovery. And as I said before, auto DevOps is another one of those things where you can put infinite time and it will only get better. And so we will continue doing that. Another thing that we're thinking about is conversational development. And I'm sure you've heard this before. Um, right now, if you go into, if you're an admin, for an instance, you can go to conversational development and you will see an overview of how your GitLab instance and its features are used and how you compare to the competition. Now, this is a really interesting idea. And I'm, happy that we build it, but today it's still not very useful. And what I want to do is I want to make this useful. In other words, I want to show to anyone using GitLab how they are performing, how they're, and it, you know that because, you know, we, we say, for instance, you use this many features. We also have statistics such as psychoanalytics that tells you how fast you are going. 
and how well you're doing in terms of text and whether you know the time to value the time that you should actually ship something goes down or it goes up and where it gets better or where it gets worse and giving you the ability to compare yourself with other teams within your organization or the instance or even across many instances will help you see okay i should you know improve this particular part oh it takes us a long time to deploy something to production what is going wrong and that all is what conversational development is about and I hope to make some strides. One of the first thing I want to do is improve site analytics to make it actually very useful so that anyone in the team goes there and that teams are proud of the scores they achieve. And they, they say to you, oh, our time to value is, you know, only two weeks versus the three weeks of another team. And that way we increase collaboration between teams. And, and it's just a useful tool to see how well you're performing. All right, two more, and then we're done. Authentication for enterprise. Um, one of the things we see, if we look at how support is doing, and if you just simply go to Zendesk, and anyone that works at GitLab can do this, you can go to Zendesk, we have a general account, and you can just search for keywords. And if you search for tickets that have a high priority, um, and then search for a number of keywords like LDAP, authentication, but also a bunch of other ones, you know, issues and such, you see that things like that relate to authentication, authorization, and specifically things like LDAP, there's just an enormous amount of questions. And as a product organization, at first thought, this seems a little bit boring, but there's a lot of value that is, that is here. And making it easier to make sure that everyone can access their GitLab instance and can do so properly, um, for one, it's very important because we want anyone to be able to enjoy it. And two, these things are so hard. I don't know, if you've never tried to set up LDAP, I don't recommend it, but you should just start reading a little bit into it. It's just a huge pain. So anything we can do to make it easier for organizations to start using GitLab, specifically if they're using LDAP, um, is a huge win for us. So what we're thinking about is making features for GitLab Enterprise Edition Premium that make it easier to work with LDAP. And that is gonna be a beginning of this, and this is also one of those things where we can invest infinite time. But I'm, I'm very excited about this initiative. And lastly, and I think this is particularly the fourth quarter of this year, we'll be spending a lot of time on requirements for partners and customers. So as you know, there's many things going on at GitLab. We have very big partners, very interesting partners that have all sorts of questions and requirements. And what we will do is we'll take those and we try to make them interesting for everybody. So if a particular partner asks something from us and they say, we really want this kind of authorization, we try to build those requirements in such a way that everyone, every customer, every user of GitLab benefits from them. Um, that might not always be the case. Um, nonetheless, we'll be spending a lot of time on this in this quarter. And if you work within GitLab, you'll see a lot of this. And that's it for the future. It's gonna be a very, very busy time in the coming, I don't know, 10 years, uh, but I'm very excited about it. I think these things are all very cool. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I'll Check the chat. Mm, I don't see any questions here. Victor H says that he likes the new navigation a lot. It's great. Also very, very happy with it. Jose says that he likes the cam charts. Vision is looking good, says Elrond. It's great. No, no questions. Like about anything in the whole product, the one thing that we sell, you have no questions. This must be really. Jacob asked me, what am I most excited about? Oh, I see you asking that question with every functional group of day, Jacob. Um, I'm not sure. I think I, I, I say this almost every time, just making it easy to do things that were previously exclusive to people that spend a lot of time on. And I think CI and CD and deploying to container schedulers and to containers in general is, it's such a powerful idea. Like it still is, and I will say this every functional group of day, it still is really hard to just deploy an app. And with auto DevOps, it's one of the things that, you know, finally it's easy. So any, any work we can put in this, any investment that we can make in this to make it easier for anyone independent of your skill or what kind of project you're working on to just deploy your idea and have it live, I think that is the most exciting thing we can do. And all the features in GitLab should be focused around that idea of 
helping people get to value quicker. How do you get to value quicker? It's simply by getting stuff deployed, right? That's the end goal of all of this. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I'm most excited about. Can Pushal S can have code names for releases starting with 10? Pushal, I think that's a really great idea and also a really bad idea. It's great because it's a lot of fun to have code names for releases. And it's a really bad idea because no one knows anymore what release you're talking about. I have never any idea which Ubuntu release I'm looking at because one occasion they call it the snarky snarwall and the other they call it 17.6. It's horrible. So no, I don't think that's a good idea. You can call it something, but not publicly because it's just confusing to people. AJ asks, do you think portfolio management elongates an already long enterprise sales cycle? Um, I don't think, I don't necessarily believe it will elongate the sales cycle portfolio management feature. I do think that enterprise edition ultimate might have that effect, but I, I do think that there's ways we can help to speed that up. Jacob says, how do you do that? I, I think he refers to making it easy to deploy uh, auto DevOps. I really believe that's the answer. It's also an easy way to say, uh, you know, just make it automatic. But I think that's a very good step. Um, Jacob says, can we name them after celebrities based on the letter in the alphabet? 10.1, you need one that starts with A, so Angelina Jolie, 10.2, Britney Spears. Yeah, that's a very horrible idea. Tori says, what area of the product do you think you could use the most your expert improvement? It's a great question. I think onboarding is the weakest part of GitLab right now. So we fixed the navigation. I think that's a good start. Um, I think onboarding in general is something that we basically don't do. And I think there's a lot of work to be there. I think there's a few other ones. Sarah found that there's a need for dashboards. I think the entry experience into GitLab is not very good. You know, we just give you a feed of text. Uh, we can do much more there. People like visual stimuli in that sense. Um, and we're also working already on this, but settings pages, they are hard to navigate and it's hard to parse. Uh, there's a lot of work that can be done there. And while I'm on it, search is also not very good in terms of UX. So there's, there's a bunch of you for there. I think the biggest bang for buck is providing a good onboarding experience though. Um, Joe asks, how is product engaging with enterprises that would be candidates for ultimate? How can we help? Well, what we're doing is we're, we're, we're trying to talk with enterprises that are already using things like portfolio management and other features that we are considering for ultimate. How can you help? Is that whenever you have one of these enterprises that you know of, okay, they might be using one of these projects, say Rally, for instance, um, bring them to me or bring them to Victor specifically, who's uh, working for a lot of time on this. Bring, say to Victor, hey, Victor, this is an enterprise, they're using this product right now. They're clearly not gonna switch to GitLab because we're lacking these features. Uh, go talk to them because we need to know as much as possible so that we can focus on the things that are important and we can ignore the things that are not important. Because we, you know, we only wanna build the things that, bring our, that make our customers switch to GitLab and forget about the things that the, the, those kind of software do that we don't actually need. So it's very important that we talk to these customers, bringing us closer to them is a great idea. Victor says that John M is already putting me in contact, in contact with folks. Give me more. All right. And John Wood says, plus one on porting GitHub repos on Moss. You can already do this uh, in GitLab, but we can always, we can always Im improve these kind of importance. All right. Three more crickets before I'm gonna call it off. Three crickets, two crickets. All right, thanks everybody. See you in the team call.